So the past six months or so have been kind of rough for Google, at least in terms of their smartphone division. They launched the Pixel 4 last October, didn't really get uh, high reviews. And today, Jason, you and I are going to debate whether or not Google's Pixel division should even exist anymore. I'm yes. Jason Cipriani with Jason Perlo. This is Jason Squared. So Jason, let's talk a little bit about the Pixel 4 and that experience before we dive into everything else. So uh, when was the Pixel 4 launched? It was in it was uh, the middle of October. Yeah, you know, so in October, it was the very last Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 phone to be launched. The, 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 the first, the last of the of the major ones, right? Right. So um, because, of, because the, the S20 came almost, um, it felt like almost immediately afterwards. Um, yeah, they launched that. in February, March, so it's just a few months later, and we have new hardware with a better processor coming yeah, out. Yeah, the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865, which is the current current high-end processor made by, by Qualcomm. So it was late to the game. It was under-resourced as far as, as far as under-built, as far as build materials. It had, you know, only six gig, only six gig of RAM. Um, I believe 64 gig of, uh, of, of flash storage was the standard. Yeah. Um, you know, again, it was when you compared it with what else had launched during that time period, which would be, I mean, the Samsung Galaxy S10 was a hell of a phone. Sure, um, it still you is. Know, no, it still is a hell of a phone, even with the 855 processor in it. Um, had eight or 12 gigs of RAM. It launched, I believe, with the standard um, storage of 128. I think it started at. It, so it, there were, it was already for the same amount of money. A better phone. So was the the, the comparable One Plus and, and and a few of the others that came out at the time. So the the value proposition of that phone wasn't great. Um, it was also the battery life was also questionable on that phone. It was, I think it only had like a thirty a three thousand milliamp battery, um, or, or or less than three thousand milliamp battery. You know, so you weren't getting a full days of life out of it, especially with the fact it had this 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 the same type of of uh, of, of of sensor on the top as the, as the iPhone has, yeah, uh, where the project solely, which was, you know, that's chewing up uh, battery life constantly when that thing runs. So um, it, it was not a, a good performing phone in terms of battery life. Um, its camera was decent, but not mind blowing. Like, like, like it's first, you know, um, computational assisted, ca uh, computational assisted camera on the pixel three. So it was expensive. It was underpowered, um, and I think for a lot of those reasons, um, and it ate a lot of battery life. Um, a lot of a lot of reviewers didn't like it, including myself. I, I kept it for an entire day and then sent it back. Yeah, you took. Now I have a six hundred dollar credit at Google. You took all of twenty four hours before you decided to return it. Yeah. I still have my review device from Google. I use it once in a while. They have improved quite a bit of the experience because software updates, battery life is good enough to get through a full day for me now, which when this phone launched, it, it was pushing it to get through a full day. So it, you, it's still not where it should have been for a flagship device released in October. But, you know, we kind of got used to this from Google as far as being behind on the processor. When you pick October as a, a time frame to release a phone, you know you're going to be several months behind on processor uh, power, with, especially right. when you're relying on Qualcomm, knowing that in December they announced the next generation processor, and by February we have devices hitting the store shelves. So it's kind of been expected. We've known this is what Google's going to do every year, and they've backed themselves into a corner with it. Pixel 4 was pro it clearly is not the best Pixel that's been released. One, two, and three have been great. Um, to your point, the camera was okay. It, it, I mean, it's on par with the Pixel 3, but it didn't move the conversation forward at all, except for their fancy low light nighttime uh, sky, starry sky photo uh, feature, which is cool. But how many times are you going to go outside and take a picture of the stars? You're just not going to use it that often. So yeah, looking forward, we have the Pixel 4a coming, or at least that's the rumor, right? Well, it's supposed to be. Yeah. So, uh, you know, of course, with, with, with COVID-19 and all, everything else going on, there have been supply issues, uh, you know, work stoppage issues and such in China uh, where the phone is made. Um, it's anticipated now that that 4A is going to be released in July, which is going to be late for that phone. Yeah, current rumor is July announcement, 
August launch for the black model, October launch for the blue model. That, you know, last year they, they announced and launched the Pixel 3a, which is their budget version of a Pixel phone. They keep a lot of the same components, especially when it comes to cameras and some of the other experience, but then they use a cheaper display, a low end processor, and they drop the price to $400. You know, we've seen Apple do this with the iPhone SE this year. Google has the, or uh, Samsung has the Galaxy A51, which recently launched, replaces the A50, which I think you talked about in your story, uh, going on into what we're gonna get to here in a minute. And then, you know, so we have a lot of competition at the foreign price point. Excellent but, competition, not just, not just competition, excellent right? competition. Yeah, so then with Google I.O. canceled this year, and Google saying, we're not even going to hold a virtual event at all, no that May timeframe for launching the Pixel 4a disappeared. So they can now do it whenever they want. There was some speculation on June 3rd, which is a week away, that alongside announcing Android 11, Google's already said that's when they're going to unveil everything that the consumers need to know about, as well as launch the public beta. There was some speculation that 4a would make its debut then. Current reports are July announcement, even later launch. You know, it, it seems too late almost, don't you think? It is too late. Um, and ag again, we are talking about a phone that is now going to have to compete, right, with the iPhone SE, which really nothing can compete with performance-wise in any category, whether you're, you're, whether you're a flagship uh, Android from another manufacturer like the, you know, the S20. None of these phones are as fast as, as, that, as that iPhone SE. So it, for the price point, I mean, it, yeah. you can't match it on at all. I mean, you can, you can more than match the cameras and the, and the display and a few other things, but as far as performance and ecosystem, you can't really match what Apple offers. So there's that problem. Um, there's also the fact that purchasing power is at an all time low now with so many people out of work. Um, there isn't a lot of, unless you absolutely have to upgrade your phone, there's no push to upgrade your phone. And then there's, again, you have the A50 out there and, and, the, and the SC competing with it. So it's, it's not a good place for Google to be in. Um, th their last, this Pixel 4, um, the, the, the main Pixel 4, not the 4A, only sold about 2 million units in the which, last year. Which is uh, big news because they finally opened up carrier availability to everyone, right? It was no longer a Verizon exclusive. Like in a silo, that's big news, but in the fact that they expanded every retail availability, it's mind boggling, but that just shows how much reviews impacted <laughs> perception, right? As well as how bad of a phone it truly was. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you look at what, how the Pixel 3 did, right, which is about, pick 3 plus the 3A did about 6.5 million units. And I would venture to guess most of those were the 3A. Most of us probably were the 3A. Yeah, so, so if, they need the 4A. Yeah. They need it. Yeah. The, the total market share of the Pixel brand across all carriers um, in the United States is somewhere around 2.4% of the entire smartphone device population, which is tiny. Now, if you think about what Microsoft did when they canceled Windows Phone, that phone had oh, had three had, had more than the three percent market share worldwide, um, let alone in the United States when they canceled it. Right. So, uh, you if you think about the total investment Google has made um, in the Pixel division in the last couple of years, right? They only spent about one point one billion dollars on HTC's engineering division. Um, to me, I think it, it would be very, a very simple decision to write the entire thing off at this point. Because what do we need Pixel for? We need Pixel as an Android developer platform with a purest Android experience. And there are other ways to achieve that besides making hardware, right? You can partner with someone like a Samsung to make a, a purest version of, of an Android phone. You have the Android One program, which they started and effectively did nothing with, right? Yeah, they haven't done anything with that in a couple of years. So, I mean, th there are ways, you know, to, to get an inexpensive stable device out there for developer usage, if that's what the uh, intent is for, for, for Pixel and to, and to be a technology demonstration platform. You don't need to make your own hardware to do that. I don't think that's exactly what the Pixel platform is for. I think maybe it started that way, but there have been quite a few changes in the last 
couple of years within Google and their approach to hardware as a whole that I think paints a different picture on where they're going with Pixel. Uh, you know, for example, they folded Nest into the hardware division. They have Rick Osterloh, who used to be the CEO of Motorola a few years back, uh, who is now heading up all of their hardware initiatives, which include Nest, Pixel, uh, Google Home, all that stuff. So that takes time. They absorbed HTC's smartphone division, like you said. Um, and I, I think I think what we saw with the Pixel 4 was a hiccup in trying to incorporate everything and still keep the momentum going forward with producing a quality phone. You know, two of the top Pixel executives recently left, according to the information, a report by the information, um, and it's been confirmed that they, they did indeed leave the head of Pixel as well as the head of, I think, photography for Pixel uh, left. Rick Arcelo is still there. and. I think that we already saw what you're suggesting in the Nexus program. We used to have the Nexus One, you know, all the Nexus S, all these other Nexus phones. Google tried this for years. They went to hardware partners, they went to Huawei, they went to Samsung, they went to Motorola, and they allowed them to use existing hardware, but install a pure Android version on it and sell it as an unlocked device. I mean, truly, Google was the first company to cut carriers out of the equation and sell direct to consumers with the Nexus One. It was revolutionary then, and now everyone does it. You know, so they, they've already been down that road, and frankly, it worked, but it was not that great. I think their vision for Pixel is a little bit different in that they don't put pure Android on there and just leave it alone. There's Pixel drops, feature drops, uh, every couple of months that add new features that you can only get on the Pixel phone. They're definitely creating a product that is different than what you can get from Samsung or LG or Motorola or Huawei or what, especially Huawei right now, I guess, um, that it, it's setting itself apart. I think what's caught them off guard is having to walk that line of not upsetting their hardware partners as they keep pushing forward. Now, is it as big as it should be? Not even close. It, it, it's a drop in the bucket in the entire smartphone industry, but I think abandoning it abandoning the Pixel product line as a whole, at least the phone portion of it, I, I don't think that's the right move for them. I, I believe Pixel's a brand, not necessarily a hardware initiative, right? So I, I agree with what you say about the Nexus line of, of phones. Um, but that happened during a time when the carriers all were working off of different um, transmitter technologies, right? So you had, you had um, Verizon, um, and Sprint had CDMA, uh, and then you had you know the AT and T's and the T Mobiles of the world that were using uh, the, the GSM style technology, right? The yep. HSPA uh, style technology. Yep. So that necessitated that um, Google and 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 Samsung at the time, um, when we're talking about the, the Nexus uh, one, I think it was, uh, or, or or the or the Galaxy Nexus, I think what what which what, what what the phone was called at the time. Um, and, 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 and Google alternated between different carriers. They didn't consistently use Samsung each time. I think one time they used Huawei, one time they used uh, LG, I think, and, and sometimes HTC they didn't disclose. Yeah, and HTC as well. I mean, they, and so they gave each manufacturer a shot uh, each time that they did that. But I think because they had to create different hardware for the different uh, phone carriers, right, and that they could not, um, they didn't have the, the really the power to force themselves onto a phone carrier in the same way that Apple does. Um, I think that made the devices very inconsistent between releases. I'm, I'm the Nexus, the Galaxy Nexus was a horrible phone. I, I went through three of them that had to get replaced because of the, and then I was on Verizon at the time. Yeah, it was a Verizon exclusive. And it was just, it was, it was, it was a garbagey phone. It's just utterly a garbagey phone because of the chipset was in it. And it was not a purist Google experience after what, you know, Nec uh, Verizon threw its, it's, it's, you know, bloatware and stuff on it. So um, I, I think that now when you have the, the LTE 4G ecosystem is out there, it's pretty much universal across carriers in terms of, of deployment technology. I think it would be possible to make a single unified device that you could sell uh, to carriers. And I think Samsung is really the only company that has the, the, the weight behind it to be able to get it onto every single carrier like that. So I think it's possible. 
Um, I mean, if you look at, at Samsung as a, as a best in breed uh, manufacturer that has all the vertical integration necessary to create you know, a top quality device, um, I think it would be possible if Google were to form a long-term partnership with the company to get you know, a, a developer purist type of phone out to the people that want it and still call it a pixel and everybody would be happy with they would have computational photography, all the things that Google wants to get accomplished with pixel they could do with a long-term partnership. Uh, now, are there, are there downsides to that? Yeah, I mean, I think they probably have to spend a lot of money with, with Samsung to get them to accept that. And I think Samsung would be more in the driver's seat than Google would be in any that type of a relationship. Yeah. But I think that, that it has, I think something like that would have to be done. Um, as far as, you know, the, the hardware division going forward, um, we'll have to look and see what happens. The Pixel 4a, I just have no interest in it, you know, in terms of, of, of it as a device. Um, the Pixel 5, um, we'll, let's see what happens, you know, with this new uh, 7 series chipset. Maybe that is the, the test 5G phone we all want to be playing with, you know, uh, in, in November or whatever it is that they launch it. Um, you know, things could change, you know, very quickly with this economy. Uh, in, in, in six months, it could get worse, right? Yeah. Um, purchasing power could reduce. We could see more people out of work, um, more people working from home with less of a need for, 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 that, for that type of technology. Um, you know, so again, there's, there's a lot, I think Google needs to look at its entire ecosystem holistically, right? It has to look at what it's done with wearables because they've just bought Fitbit. I haven't seen them do anything with it. Which um, they have to be planning something. There's something, they're cooking something there. They have to, they have to be cooking something. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's the, 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 there's their, their home automation stuff, which they need to, they need to figure out how to clean that entire act up with Nest and, and everything else that they're doing. Um, and their, 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 their IoT device, you know, um, their IoT device ecosystem has to be looked at as well, right? For everything they're doing with home, with streaming and 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 stuff that they're competing with with everybody else. So, um, and and their and their services ecosystem as well, right? They need to yeah. look at that in, in terms of whether they should be doing bundling. You know, Apple hasn't hasn't released a bundle yet, but we expect that they probably will. The question is when. So I I think this is going to be a very interesting you know year going forward, 2021. Uh, is probably when is when we're really going to see Android 11 devices come, you know, to the to release, right? Right. So it'll be it'll be the next Samsung. It'll be the next, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, OnePlus will probably beat everyone to the punch like they did last year and be the first one to launch. You know, they launched the first Android 10 device. Um, I imagine we'll see them do that again with Android 11. Of course, the Pixels will be updated on launch day. Um, sometime yeah. in August is usually when that happens. But you're right majority of new phones launching next year um or we'll have to wait for the majority of phones launching with android 11 until next year i mean as far as the company the, the, the division's financial performance i i don't see it improving significantly so really the question is what what can google do to sort of minimize its losses with this division right the company is also going to be facing um antitrust probably by the end of the summer as well uh, which could influence some of its strategy on how it does things. So really a lot can change in, in, in the next year or so um, yeah. with Google's hardware division um, overall. So, so I, 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 don't, I don't know what you feel about it. I mean, I know that you like, you like the devices, you like the concept of, of a pixel division of and, and, oh, and I love it. hardware. Yeah. And, I did, and I did for a while as well. I, I just think that there's probably a better way the company can do this rather than trying to build their own stuff. I'll, I'll be blunt. I am tired of talking about Samsung. I'm, I am. I'm tired of talking about Apple too. I want to talk about other companies when it comes to smartphones. So I think partnering with Samsung, we need to have more players in this game, right? I mean, Huawei is knocked out of it now by all the sanctions. We can't talk about them. And well, we can talk about them, but they're a non-player anymore because they can't release the device. For now. Them. For now. And for so this, for this we're left with LG who kind of tries once in a while. They don't really see any success with it. HTC is now part of uh, Google. Motorola does great, but only at the low end. They just released the Edge Plus as an exclusive to Verizon. Nothing I'm going to use or even try to use because I don't have Verizon as a carrier. Uh, and so that leaves us with Apple and Samsung. That's the conversation yep. you have whenever you talk smartphones. 
ones. And I'm, I'm done. I, I'm tired of talking about them. So yeah, I, I want Google to have success with the Pixel line. And you know, The Verge just published a, a podcast slash interview with Alphabet and Google CEO Sundar Pichai, and they brought up the Pixel line, and they brought up the mass exodus they're having, or you know, the two top executives that left the Pixel uh, group, and they questioned, what are you guys doing with this division? Like, what's going on? And Sundar said, you know, this is a long play. We realize things aren't where they're supposed to be right now. We have a vision for three to four years for the hardware division itself, and Pixel phone itself plays a big role in that. And if you ask me, I think what they're working on is their own processors, so they're not tied to Qualcomm's release schedule and being late in that schedule, they're going to take more of an Apple approach. And he hinted at this in the interview saying they want to control the entire stack. And there's only one other company that says that that's Apple. So if they want to control the other entire stack, that means they need to take Android away from everybody else. Yeah, because, well, because that, that would right. mean, that, so that would mean Fuchsia, which is going to replace Android or is going to be the next Android, right? Uh, which is a completely different operating system from the ground up. It, it is, it has Android application compatibility layers in it, but it is really completely, it's as different as an operating system as Windows XP was from 95, right? right. It's architecturally completely different in every way. So I think they have the opportunity uh, with Fuchsia to say, you know what, we're not going to license Android out, or if we're going to license it out, you have to agree to certain rules about what we're saying as far as updates and all that. Maybe, and maybe make everybody act as a pixel going forward. Right. Um, well, that's part of Pixel's problem is Google can be as aggressive as they wanted to with the software because they've spent the last 10 years reeling everybody back from the wild, wild west of Android, right? And letting people do whatever they wanted with the software and not having those hard requirements other than you have to include Gmail and, and Google Maps. And those requirements have gotten tougher over the last couple of years, but it's still, you know, it was fair game to do pretty much whatever you wanted on top of Android. And so trying to balance that with pushing forward the pixel line. You know, ARM just announced some new processors yesterday that are prime yep. examples of what Google can use inside the pixel line. Uh, there's, there's a lot going here and I, I think it's too early given the changes we've seen with HTC and bringing Osterlo in and all of that. I think it's too early to just cancel the pixel division within, within Google altogether. Yeah, I mean, I understand the, the desire to want to see different things in the industry. Um, I'm, I personally am much more excited about what Microsoft is doing. Uh, now, of course, they have that duo, which I think is probably not prime for the current economy. No. But I do like the fact that Microsoft is investing money in Android. And we may see maybe different devices coming out of them than, than what they originally intended. Um, I think Microsoft can solve some of the problems of that, of that sprawl in terms of, of uh, you know, the the fact that my, that Android has become this sort of you know uh, what what is it that Adrian used to call it it's the the, the hell stew, right? So toxic we have we have the hell stew, um, and that's what's you know sort of detracted from the the the, the joy of having Android, right? Um, I was a huge proponent of Android when it first started, right? And I was not an Apple I was not an Apple user of any type, you know, in two thousand seven. Um, so, uh, and I, and I bought the first Motorola Droid. I didn't buy the first, um, I didn't buy the first Android phone, that sliding thing, whatever the heck that thing was called. It was an you HCC. To, yeah. And, uh, my brother bought one of those things, but I, I bought the first Motorola Droid and I was, I was happy as hell with, with, with Android when that came out. Um, but, and I've liked, I've loved watching the, the operating system develop, especially on the open source side, you know, to see, to see all those technologies come to come into play. Um, but I, I do think that it's, it's gone off the rails significantly since, since it started. Um, and, and Samsung has become a huge and powerful company because of Android. Right. And they've become very successful and, and, and formidable company in terms of its, its manufacturing cap capabilities as well. Um, but again, I think, I think that the, the fatigue that you're seeing talking about Apple and, and, and Samsung all the time is really the, uh, an issue with the maturity of the industry, right? The, I mean, these things have, have, have reached a feature set that we are so comfortable with now, right? And, and if it, no one's expecting major radical changes in smartphones, right? 
Um, Which is not, unfortunate. I don't think there's much more you can do with one of these things other than increase the power capabilities and, and, and maybe attach it to a monitor and use it as a computer if you want or something. Who knows? Which Samsung um, is trying. Or, 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 as, as a, as, as a, or as a central processing unit remotely for, for, for AR glasses, right? Which is what we're hearing might be coming out of Apple. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, it, it is, it is the, the device everybody has to walk around with. It doesn't have to cost $1,000 anymore. Right, no, certainly shouldn't, shouldn't cost a thousand dollars. There's no reason that with the with the manufacturing capabilities of a Samsung or any of these other companies um, that we should have to pay that kind of money. I think four hundred dollars for you know what we see coming out of the, the SE should be standard. You know that 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 level of power, that level of capability should be standard at at a, at a four hundred dollar level. Right, um, nobody should be performing worse than that for $400. I so I, I think I think we've reached, again, a point where it's highly commoditized, right? The apps have not outstripped the capabilities of the hardware, right? So whether you have a $400 phone or a $1,200 phone, the, the apps are gonna perform exactly the same, yep. right? So the differentiation we're seeing is in things like cameras, displays, right? Now we're talking ability for the, to fold them. You know, I, I, just, I just feel that we've reached a, a, a a maturity point where um, we need to see uh, different technologies come across to, yeah. to really which is why I think the pixel line has a spot in this industry and in, in this market is because Google is adding some pretty fancy AI and machine learning features to their phones and they're testing them there before they release it wider in Android Google call screen is a perfect example or their new live caption feature that's another one all that stuff is done directly on the device you know call screen someone calls you you don't want to answer it you let Google assistant answer it and then you could tap buttons to talk back to them where live caption adds live captioning directly to any video or even a podcast while you're listening or watching it. And all of that is done on device. And that's stuff you can't find on any other phones. So that's the part of Pixel I really like and hope stays around. You know, if Google's partners you're, with Samsung- You're right, the, the innovation aspects are, are, are excellent. I mean, the fact that they, they really introduced uh, computational photography before anyone did, right? You know, I mean- able I mean, to I mean, take a portrait photo with a single lens, nobody had done that when they released the first Pixel or the second pick, whichever one it launched on. It, and now Apple does it, Samsung's doing it. Yep. You know, those are Night mode. The kind of stuff that gets me excited about Pixel because they, they find an area where no one's really doing a lot. They put their know-how into it and then you get something pretty cool out of it. Call screen is amazing. I use it all the time when I'm using my Pixel. It, I'll let it answer phone calls from relatives. You know, it just, it's just, it's one of those things that until you use it regularly, it just sounds like, and eh, that might be a gimmick, but you know, it's a great feature to have. Google has lots of smart people. That's why people go to work for Google, right? Yeah. So, but the problem is, I think there's, they, there's a fight between the corporate culture there and the engineering culture that has been happening quite a bit in, in all aspects of their business. And I think that the fact that they, they lost these two guys that were very smart is, is indication of, of something wrong um, with them culturally that has to be dealt with. Um, sure. And maybe that was part of that. You know, I mean, we saw yeah. it with Apple when they got rid of Scott Forstall, you know, who headed up iPhone operating system yep. and UI for years. You know, there, he was the one who gave us the calendar that looked like a leather planner, you know, the skeuomorphic designs. He, he was behind all of that. And once he was gone, now we have, you know, a simpler design that, frankly, looks better. It looks better, but has, but has also has iOS turned into a, a big fat mess. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, so that's I, a total I, I would have kept skeuomorphic and, 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 and slick operation right. um, for, the, for the mess that we have now. Uh, I agree 100%. There's a lot of hidden features that aren't very obvious to people. I'm constantly explaining how to do basic tasks because they're, they're hidden now. And so, yes, there are pros and cons uh, to that, but that's, that's a whole nother show in and of yes. itself, I think. Uh, any closing thoughts, Jason? No, like I said, I, I don't think I'm going to be getting a 4A. Um, I, just, I just don't feel like the value proposition is there. Um, I will see, wait and see what the five looks like. Um, you yeah. know, Things could look very different in four or five months. You know, if the rumors are true. Your six hundred dollar credit will be more than enough to buy a Pixel Five. Maybe I'll have use for that six hundred dollar credit finally. <laughs>
as for me, I, I really hope that we continue to see and that, that vision that Pachai uh, laid out of, you know, three to four years of really bringing it all together truly happens. Granted, every time uh, you, you talk to him about it, it's always a five-year vision. So hopefully it's, it's not that long and it doesn't just keep getting pushed out. But uh, I really want to see Pixel keep innovating. Um, I'm Jason Cipriani. And I'm Jason Perlow. And this is Jason Squared. Thanks for watching or listening. And make sure to check out more of our work at ZDNet.com.